Hello and welcome to another episode of Investigators in Cars Drinking Coffee. I'm your host, Mark Mernan, president of Complete Legal Investigations, here with, oh, I forgot, I, I got, forgot my other one here. I got to transfer it. Here, I have one of these too. This is the real thing, Mark. This is the real thing. There's nothing in this one, however. I got I to gotta transfer it. I forgot to transfer it. I'm also joined once again by my co-host, the inimitable, fashionable, what Wendy Strom Mernan, licensed private investigator, certified paralegal. And guess what? It's been a couple of weeks since we've done one. Yes. Yeah. Good. I'm, welcome back. Welcome back. Good to be back with y'all. But uh, today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic. This is, this is going to be Jeffrey Epstein and why his accomplice isn't getting out of jail anytime soon. And Wendy, I was able to obtain this little document right here. This is the government's memorandum, memorandum in support of detention. And so, as you and I know, we have done oodles of federal criminal defense work over the years. Yes, we have. For how many years? Oh, my goodness. Probably yeah. 20 years. Yeah, yeah. at least. Yeah. yeah. And uh, many, many of our clients have been held in pretrial detention. None of them as famous as uh, Jelaine Maxwell, the yeah. uh, Jeffrey Epstein associate. Who's have we been... ever had any get out on bail? Yeah. Yeah, I've okay. had several of them. We've oh, actually won true. some. We we've won yeah. some federal cases yeah. uh, with a uh, with a uh, a male defendant and a female co-defendant. Uh, we won one of the biggest fraud cases in um, yeah. in uh, Florida history at that time. But uh, cool. yeah, ooh, well, that was back in the early two thousands. We've had some okay. other ones since then. But we want to talk to this one particularly since it has so much notoriety. And Miss Maxwell was determined to be a flight risk by the federal uh, magistrate judge who heard the uh, detention hearing. So uh, you have a document here from it. What are the four elements? What are the four factors for uh, that a judge would uh, uh, consider before granting bail to a criminal defendant? Right, according to the Bail Reform Act, one is the nature and circumstances of the crime that they're charged with. Yeah. How, you know, how bad is it? Yeah. Uh, the weight of the evidence against the person. How much evidence does the government have? Right. Is it, you know, you never know, but you don't does know. it look pretty, pretty bad? Yeah. <laughs> um, the history and characteristics of the defendant, you know, including their character. Right. So they'll do, you know, what have they been up to? And financial resources. Do they have the resources to take off um, and hide somewhere? Yeah. And also, last, number four, the seriousness of the danger posed by the defendant's release. Yeah. Is this person a danger to society if they let him out or her out? Yeah. And the, and the facts of the Jeffrey Epstein case are, are extremely, un unfortunately, very well known. It's a very sordid and ugly matter. Uh, minor women, minor girls brought into Epstein's uh, presence for um, really some uh, heinous abuse abusive acts and Miss Maxwell charged with being an accomplice and actually yeah. uh, rounding up uh, young uh, female victims so she is in a world of hurt and uh, we should break those down though I mean if number one is the nature and circumstances of the offense well the first thing you have to consider in this one is the age of the victims yes and minors are anything with minors right? anything with minors yeah. you're just not getting out I mean yeah. the reality of it is you're just not getting out the burden to the defense that's the government's motion the government has to establish those um, beyond a preponderance to a preponderance you don't have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt but they have to have a preponderance of the evidence that you have minor victims and that's just a given mm. uh, the second one was what what was that the one the weight the weight of the evidence so how much evidence do they have against this person well now me... is this person guilty yet no, she's not been found yeah, guilty. Yeah, that's what we have to remember. Yeah, she's not this been is... found guilty. She's presumed innocent until right. proven guilty. Right. Uh, however, that being said, the government has uh, terabytes of data, <laughs> yeah. hundreds of interviews, uh, dozens of victims, all of whom <clears throat> were lined up for the Jeffrey Epstein trial before his death. Now, who does the work, <clears throat> you know, for the FBI, or who does the work for the government to find well, the all F these things? The FBI would be a task. I think that is the okay. principal uh, law enforcement agency working in tandem with local law enforcement agency in okay. Palm Beach, New York. Uh, actually, Royal Palm Beach here. Interesting. Okay. Even uh, like here in Palm Beach County would be yeah, the FBI? Correct. Oh, yeah, well, that was the, uh, that was the uh, uh, local... Uh, Focal point for a long time was uh, Jeffrey Epstein's uh, man, uh, estate here in Palm Beach. Uh -huh. Once again, Palm Beach is on the map. Yes. Uh, again, not for a very good reason. Yeah. But uh, you got ties. You've got uh, minor victims. The second one was 
the weight of the evidence. Weight of the evidence, pretty substantial. And the then third one. History and characteristics of the defendant, including yeah. the character of the person. This was a problem because there is also, I understand that there's also an open perjury. Uh, she's been charged with perjury in another case, lying in deposition. So that's a big hit. But Miss Maxwell uh, was born to a very wealthy family. Yeah. Uh, by some reports, had access, had an account with $20 million in it and multiple passports. Born in France, a British citizen with passports in the U.S., Britain, and France. Guess what? That's a flight risk. Yeah, I don't think she had any prior criminal record, though. No, no prior criminal That's records. That's interesting. But it's interesting. What is the likelihood of uh, appearing in court? And uh, I revert back to the first page here. There was a, a very telling statement here. Uh, by the uh, in the U.S. government's in the government's motion, uh, extensive. She had extensive. She had three passports, large sums of money, extensive international connections, and absolutely That's no three. three <laughs> absolutely no reason to stay in the United States. That's four. That's four. four strikes. You're four out. Strikes. <laughs> three. Uh, you're out. So the bottom line is, while the Bail Reform Act provides um, for um, hearings in order for a judge to determine if if the defendant is a candidate for pretrial release. Uh, in many cases, particularly in federal court, the bail amounts are very high. Um, so it is a, you know, it's problematic in any given circumstances, but this is the worst of the worst circumstances to consider yeah. for bail. Now, I heard her attorney um, used uh, something as a reason that they should give her bond. Do you remember what that was? Well, that was supposedly the COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we have, we have, a, we have a client yes, who is now, uh, he was serving a 14-year sentence and uh, four years into it was granted a release because of the COVID threat. Yeah. Because he's an older guy. He's an older man. Yeah. He's living in his uh, living in his home up in Michigan now, as I understand yeah. it. So oh, wow. it's not unheard of. Right. But Miss Maxwell. It's not working in this case. No, it's not. <laughs> and, and again, we 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 don't want to. We take uh, very seriously the presumption of innocence. Who knows this woman's story? Right. I'm sure the government has a version, but I can tell you, as both you and I can say from personal experience, no one is as guilty as charged nor as innocent as they claim right so somewhere in the middle of the murky middle there there's a great story yeah but uh, anyway we just thought this was a fascinating topic to uh, uh, talk here on investigators and in cars uh, and wouldn't uh, you we... say that it kind of the side the judge would the court probably sides more with the government on these bail issue frequently yeah frequently yeah. just uh, because they they don't want to take the chance no they don't want to take a chance yeah. now federal court federal judges are lifetime appointments right so they are not prone to re-election issues like state and municipal judges right so they don't necessarily have the pressure and you have a very good particularly in palm beach county we have a very very good federal bar we do uh judges attorneys uh, defender offices uh u.s attorney offices we we have really top flight top of the game uh, professionals here so it's going to be a real shoot them out can you imagine if she did take off if they gave her bail uh, in this case yeah, with the press be, and yeah, it would be ugly yeah so, so i don't i just don't think no way and yeah. she's up in new york so a lot of the case while I, I should clarify that the case is not based here in palm beach it's in the southern district yeah. in new york okay. but so much of the nexus is here in um, in palm beach so there'll be a lot of uh, be a lot of interesting uh, angles to follow we are not involved in the case no. um and so we feel like we can comment a little bit about <laughs> it offer some uh, uh some lay expert we're not lawyers nor do we play one on television no. But, uh, or in cars. Or in cars. <laughs> We're <laughs> investigators in cars. We're so, investigators. Anyway, be with us next time. Uh, don't forget, uh, where have we got? We've got coasters. We still have a couple of coasters left. I think these might be the last two, but we will send them out. We've had a number of you. Oh, I can't find them. They're you somewhere can't the find bottom. something in that very oh. organized... Investigators ah. Cars, cool coasters. Uh, if you're a new subscriber, uh, just let us know. Direct message me on Twitter at uh, completelegalnv.com, and we will uh, shoot out a couple to you, a couple of hello to a couple of our new subscribers as well. And uh, we will catch up with you very soon on our next episode of Investigators in Cars Drinking Coffee. Thank you.